All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, we will today tell you something about the concept that we've been working on. Um, I will do this together with Christoph, who has been working on a personal data store project for quite a while now. Um, I have more of an academic background, so we said we'll do this together, maybe also contribute different perspectives on the project. Um, so we'll change during the talk a little bit. So, um, what we've been working on is this idea of semantic containers, um, starting from the problem, um, from a figure that you all are familiar with by now, um, the idea we have a person that gains control over their data, um, and uh, if you break this down, so we need to be able to get data from different data sources, and uh, once we have control, we can uh, provide our data to different data using services. Um, in uh, more detail, if you break this down and look at it um, from the perspective of a personal data store, that means that um, well, there are some okay, some bubbles missing, but never mind. Um, it basically means that a lot of different uh, data flows are involved in these things. And all these data flows come with certain interoperability challenges. So um, the project, uh, Christoph's project of this personal data store basically started by uh, obtaining data from various data sources that you already have under your control to some extent maybe, to collect data from your devices that collect data for you, etc. Um, but, of course, you also want to get data into your personal data store from various commercial providers, various services that you use, etc. So, uh, the GDPR gives you really leverage with this, with uh, the portability rights that have also been discussed extensively during this conference. Um, so, you might be able to request your data, maybe even subscribe, uh, use APIs to get your data, etc. You might want to get data in from uh, governmental uh, sources, etc. Uh, and on the other hand, once you have your data, uh, you want to make use of it. So, uh, one of the motivations was that um, um, adoption of uh, personal data store service kind of hinges on, well, what value can you get from this data? And that again depends on how easy is it to acquire data, get it into uh, your personal data store, um, and also what can you get out of it. So can you provide your data back to various services to uh, improve the services that you get, maybe even sell your data. Um, you might also want to share it with others. We also had the, the notion mentioned in various sessions uh, throughout the conference that um, your data on your own is maybe not that valuable, but once you put it into context with other people's data, with your peers, etc., uh, then it might be more interesting. And um, we will also talk briefly about the use case that you might want to, again, share your data for research purposes. For instance, you might want to donate your data, and this should also be easy, and you should be able to specify how your data can be used, and this links back to the previous talk, of course, um, where you need to be able to specify this in some way. Um, and this was the starting point for this uh, notion of a semantic container to address the semantic um, and technical or syntactic uh, challenges involved in all these interfaces. So how do you get data in? How do you get data out? But also higher level interoperability challenges. So um, I will just looking back at the, um, the, the interoperability hierarchy uh, that we've seen with these six levels. Uh, so basically, uh, we address the technical, the syntactic level, the semantic level, but also then higher levels of interoperability, like legal interoperability, uh, by being able to say, when I provide my data, these are the rules under which uh, it can be used, to so policies and consent, uh, transparency of what happens to my data, um, then provenance and reproducibility is another pretty important aspect that's frequently overlooked. Um, when the data is used by researchers, for instance, uh, it's important to know, okay, how was this data derived, where did it come from, and to have a complete chain uh, of this. And all these things are uh, interoperability challenges that we uh, try to address with this concept of semantic containers that uh, we will introduce next. Uh, but before that, uh, maybe just a 
general introduction to this person's latest book project. Okay, thank you very much, Ilma. Hello, good morning also from my side. Um, yes, as Elma, thank you. As Elma already introduced me, um, I'm coming up from the research side, not from the scientific side, but uh, three years ago, basically, when I learned about my data, I looked into personal data stores and was really looking for a solution for ordinary people. Mm -hmm. I mean, my wife is a psychiatrist, my sister has a winery, and people usually don't care about data. They don't know about semantics. Mm -hmm. And basically, so I started off and said, okay, how can I provide a solution for people uh, who are not interested in that? And maybe they have questions they want to answer about data, but they don't know that they need the data for it. So I started with a concept that uh, we call Own Your Data. And basically, we created a concept where we said, okay, how can we enable people to tap into data sources? We have a huge focus on privacy, but privacy is that people can use. So, uh, they don't care about encryption or blockchain or anything, but really we wanted to make it completely seamless for them. So we have a really end-to-end -end encrypted data store, all the data um, connectors that we implement, implement end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, data is made immutable by writing every record into the Ethereum blockchain. And what we also found out how people are interacting, they are just interested in the answers. So we get weekly reports answering questions with the data that we have collected. <coughs> So this is how we started. Uh, that of course, yeah, you can extend this data store with plugins and very fine transmission if you want to. But uh, there's also this uh, privacy by default that you have sensible uh, permission set by default. And also what turned out now later interesting is that we with uh, developed this together, we use Docker extensively. So everything in all your data, every functionality is encapsulated in the Docker container. Then you answer uh, a question, this is in the Docker container, then you uh, import data, this is in the Docker container. And what we found out now, after three years, still with all the data you collect, with all this processing that is nicely integrated, it's not that much value that you get out of it. It's really about sharing the data with others, and this is kind of the motivation. Then one year uh, ago, I um, got to know Elma at a conference, and this is when you know, a very fruitful discussion started about how we can really make people interact. Okay, so this is also a little bit of my background uh, for working as I just mentioned, I'm a data scientist, and usually when we share data, at least in my company it works still, so we go to someone asking, do you have this data? If someone identify where the data is, this person then exports the data. If it's five, ten megabytes, they send it to you by, by email, maybe they put it on a network share, mm -hmm. and send you import it to R, and do something with it. Actually, quite cumbersome, but uh, this is what it is right now. And so what I said, okay, I want to have a shopping list or a wish list, how I want to make it better when you exchange data. And this is what we came up, and this is one of the first questions I want to ask you. What do you think about this requirements list? What would you add or maybe what uh, would don't you need? So the first thing that I want to do when I share someone with uh, data, and I want to have authentication, I want to know whose data is it, have it signed, make it provable. The second thing is, I want to know about the data integrity, especially this open data. Is this really the complete data set? Was it out of afterwards? This can easily be done, just store the hash of the data set uh, in blockchain. Next one is, I want to have clean data. You spend numerous hours just to get the data in the format that you're expecting that it is. Um, we have the technology for this. Can semantically describe the data and verify it automatically. So this is also here. The next one is if I give data away, I want to restrict the usage. And this was a, a very nice coincidence that we learned of the special project where you can describe uh, a usage policy when you give data away and specify what is allowed and what is not allowed to be given. Next, I want to know about the provenance when I get data, what is the full history of it? How did it end up as it is right now? Um, and of course, I want standardized access. I want to have an API. I want, don't want to mess with data formats, with JSON, with XML, with uh, RDF storage, mm -hmm. or whatever. I just want to have one API to access. So, this is basically my vision. And of course, I want to have it fully automated as a data provider when I give data away and also as a data consumer when I work with it. So, my question to you would be uh, Does this list make sense? Would you add something or do you move something? Okay, and I think we move on a little bit about semantics. Okay, 
So, uh, the concept that we've developed is this idea of semantic containers. So we started talking about uh, semantics because basically in this personal data store you now have a lot of uh, different kinds of data, um, but basically just um, is p-value pairs or in very simple formats um, and the problem uh, that well became quite obvious is what can I actually do with this data? I may want to uh, integrate my own data and for that the meaning of the data must be clear to some extent. Um, so I want to maybe bridge different categories of data. Maybe I've collected some data on my personal finances, some mobility data, health data, communication data, etc. Um, and if I just feed everything into some personal data store in whatever syntactic format, that doesn't really get me anywhere. So the first idea was, okay, we need semantics, we need agreed upon um, definitions of terms, uh, common understanding uh, of different types of personal data. We are still at the beginning of that and I can see that also in other parts of, at this conference. Um, and the second idea, the second key idea is to uh, not put everything into one big uh, box, if you will, but this idea of uh, compartmentalization. So I can have different categories of data which have different needs, different requirements, where I want to specify different policies of how the data can be used. Some uh, I'm willing to share openly, some are, I might be uh, less inclined to do so. So this idea of um, having different um, boxes for different kinds of data um, is, is one of the starting points. The other one is shared vocabularies to have a common understanding. So this is where semantics comes in. And then also higher level interoperability. So not just being able to integrate, to mesh up data, to exchange data between these containers, but also have um, things like uh, a usage policy that defines uh, what can be done with the data, a provenance trail that's generated automatically where you can then uh, really see the data flow and reconstruct it. And the way uh, this is implemented now is um, on the basis of Docker containers, as Christopher will go into more detail. So the idea is to encapsulate both data and uh, processing capabilities, services into um, self-contained units that can then also be moved, that are mobile, that you can uh, instantiate easily so you can take a base container and uh, different people can put in uh, their data and then easily exchange the data as well. Um, the data and the services should be self-descriptive, so this is again uh, the semantic dimension, so it should be um, easy to um, um, use these services and make the, to make the system interoperable, interoperable, we need semantic descriptions of both the dead data itself, uh, common formats, uh, the metadata and uh, the service the APIs. And um, the um, basic idea is to have explicit semantics and this graph-based data model of RDF, many of you might be familiar with. Um, if not, we can go into medium later on, I think there was a question about semantics. Um, internally, we don't care whatever technology format is used inside these containers to actually store the data, doesn't matter. The idea is to have a common interface based on uh, RDF and this explicit semantics, but this can be uh, just JSON objects being exchanged with some additional annotation uh, that adds the meaning to, to these JSON objects. So this is what we want to address. Maybe I can go over this a little more quickly. Um, starting from the technical level, we use standard protocols, uh, JSON as an exchange format, uh, but then adding um, the meaning by uh, using JSON LD, so we get some semantic interoperability. But then we work our way up up the stack and also uh, include semantic API descriptions so that uh, services know what uh, other services are doing. Um, creating automatically provenance trails, uh, implementing privacy enforcement, and so on. Uh, and the way that this is done is uh, with a range of semantic technologies. Uh, so as I said, we don't care what's uh, done internally within these containers. Um, the important thing is that we have some machine readable data and metadata and uh, interfaces uh, 
um, and she should be developer friendly, so RESTful and, and uh, using JSON and as an exchange format, uh, and based on standard semantic web technologies such as uh, RDF for data representation, JSON and then uh, the vocabularies that we use define somehow you know, RDF schema. Uh, the API description, and then uh, we can also do data validation, for instance, using uh, things like Shekel, which is a constraint language that allows you to define um, what kind, what, uh, what, well, what constitutes valid data, which also is important then, for instance, in the data donation use case, where you want to check the data that you get from different people. Um, and then at some point, you also need a way to uh, really transform this data into this um, representation and for this there are also existing tools that we can use for that such as RML. Um, okay, so how does this work now um, in practice when implementing? <coughs> okay, uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, what we learned from your data, I'm a big fan of Docker. Maybe you were learning, I got into Linux uh, end of the 90s, and basically previously when you did something, you got some versus also, you did a configure, make, make install, you had the errors that showed up, and actually spent quite some time. Nowadays, basically, or at least that what I find out is you just get for anything a Docker container, run it, and it's completely separated, and I really like this. So my idea was, okay, if this works in the software world, why shouldn't it also work in the data world? What is if I package all the data that is relevant in the Docker container? Actually, if you look at Docker, you say, ah, oh, could be problems with it. Do you really want to have databases in the Docker container? Uh, there are some technical questions. But basically, what we are really looking for is at the Docker container with all the visuals that I provided you before, the uh, framework logic in the Docker container, and then you access the data. Uh, the data it's all about this standardized API, it's with the data is in there, you have the semantic description and everything. And I think this can make the life of a data scientist so much easier. And also if you want to share data, uh, if you want to donate data, you can really create nice workflows using this technology. As you have standardized API and you have encapsulated logic that does everything for you, right in the blockchain, science the data, verify it. Um, Question to you is, what do you think about using Docker for this? Does this make sense? Uh, what is your input on that? Um, next is hopefully a little bit more clear. We have provided here uh, three steps how this works when you use what we call a semantic container. Basically what's already available, you have a base container, so this is available on Docker Hub. You just download to a Docker phone, uh, get this container, and then upload a semantic description describing what data you want to do with your, um, what you work with. You will later see you have a mm -hmm. step count semantic container where you store the data about step count, the number of steps you make every day. And this you can easily describe, for instance, uh, via Shackle. You can say, okay, now I have a container that includes the has that can hold this data. This is the first step, the set of steps. The next step is you can fill the data either locally on your computer or you can put it somewhere online and invite people to store data in. And the nice thing is, every time someone submits data, it's automatically validated. You can also define upfront what do you want to do with the data that is getting in there. And the people who submit the data also specify what is allowed to be done. And this is all automatically checked. And of course, when you have data, you can process it. Again, use data, uh, Docker containers clearly define what's happening there, and then the this process container also exposes what it's doing, and it can automatically check through this usage policy if this is allowed. So basically you say, I want now to aggregate some data, I want to do some analysis, and you can upfront specify in your data to you allow this processing or not, and then this is checked by the process container. I've already seen on the questions, how do we enforce it? We don't enforce it. We have just this possibility that it's automatically checked. If someone wants to bypass it, of course it's possible. It's just with paying taxes. Uh, you should do it, but if you don't do it, okay, there must be law, there must be the society who forces you. You don't have a technical solution to enforce it. It's just an invitation to say, okay, if you use that way, you just have benefits. You have this automatic creating uh, uh, of provenance, describing what's happening, and then uh, this should be uh, why you're using it. 
Um, and this is not theoretical. Actually, we have already started implementing this. The first use case, what we did, uh, we have a very nice institute in Austria. It's also more than 100 years old, a meteorological institute, and also um, they provide a seismic data about earthquakes all over the world. And what we did is we created a little service, it's available uh, under this address, where the data that is provided by some uh, about all the earthquakes is authenticated, so they sign the data. We where you can verify its integrity by the storing when every time you make a request, you write it up in the Ethereum blockchain, and of course, it's a nice REST API. So, the first three items of my shopping list are already fulfilled. What we don't have yet is, in this use case, we don't describe the data, we don't have restrictable usage and provenance. But at least the first three we have already done, and I think we did this in June, July this year. <coughs> you can try it out. I think the uh, slides will become online, and we can have a look at it. Next, oh, and this is how it looks like. Of course, it's integrated in my little project on your data. And this is how a record looks like. And you just get an additional line, verified source, get this little nice uh, check mark. Yes, this was signed by a trusted source. And then you know in your data store, okay, I can trust it. The next one, uh, the next use case where we have uh, all <coughs> six uh, elements included in. So we use the basic technology, what we did with the seismic data, and said, okay, we want to describe the semantic data, we want to enforce, well, we want to have a usage policy, and we want to have the provenance. This time, in this use case, we said we don't want to import data into our personal data store, but we want to send data out. And especially here, we have chosen uh, step count data. That is, everybody has this when you have a smartphone, you see in Apple Health or in Google Fit how many steps are you making, or at least uh, there are, um, an estimate of the numbers that you made. And with interviews, we found out this is data that people are willing to share. And basically, what we have implemented, this is also online. You can uh, enter this data here, and then you can specify in this usage policy who are allowed recipients, what is the purpose that is done. You can uh, include all of this, you can also uh, specify if you want to donate anonymously or provide your email address. And when you check this show all data before sending, you see how this JSON LV record looks like, and then it's sent uh, to a donate um, the semantic container who accepts the data, or sends back, okay, this is not acceptable because of any error. <coughs> so this is an early use case, but this is already available. Uh, okay, and now. And I don't know, how are we doing time-wise? <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, I don't, won't go into too much technical detail, but if you're interested, you can take a look at the slide, um, what actually comes out of this process. So this is just an example of how uh, the data coming out from an iPhone, for instance, looks, and how this can then be converted into a JSON object. And once we have this plain JSON object, we can start adding semantics to it. Um, we can add an external vocabulary. Here we just use our semantic container definition that defines the terms used in this vocabulary. So what does this really mean? A date and a value, what is a step count? Uh, but then, then we also want uh, to represent the content. So what we've just seen in this nice uh, UI, what is actually being generated for that in terms of the usage policy, in terms of the provenance trail, and in terms of in oops, okay. <laughs> in terms <laughs> of um, the integrity. Integrity. Exactly. <laughs> so we include the hash of the actual data. Um, and this is then the final output. So basically, just to wrap up, this was already my conclusion slide. The next one, uh, interoperability, is I think a key issue for these kinds of personal data stores and services that you want to do on them, because the, the value is somehow dependent on how easy it is to get data uh, in, how, how to get data out, how to uh, link data up, how to create mashups of your data, how to link your data with other people's data, compare your data, and also contribute your data to things like scientific research, make data donations in various use cases, etc. And um, the semantic container concept um, is one proposal of how this can be achieved. Um, and yeah, so if you're interested, I think the last message is uh, please go ahead try, try it out. Um, I think we have the URL in the slide. Maybe we can also put it into screen.io, so it's uh, um, ownyourdata.eu, I think. Yeah, 
So if you're interested, just set up an account, try it out uh, yourself, and that, yeah, brings <laughs> us to the end. Yeah, the market of Yeah, so uh, in terms of next steps, ah, okay, perfect. So uh, these are, well, the next steps, uh, what we are doing next, we are working on integrating this into uh, a data market, um, which is a project going on in Austria right now, um, which is mostly focused on business to business so far, data exchange, uh, and the idea is can uh, individuals somehow uh, participate in these data markets and with the project coming up, up to work on that. Um, and then we have another uh, project coming up looking at the GDPR right of uh, access and, and uh, how we can use requests to, um, well, which I think is, is of interest from interest for many people here, um, how to create standard importers, looking at what's already available, developing uh, vocabularies for different categories of personal data, or uh, basically doing a survey first, so what's already available, what could be used, etc. Setting up, up the developer infrastructure and so on, so these are the next steps. Brilliant. All right, thank you very much.